Hi guys, bear with me while I set up the screen recorder. It's going to capture the screen as well as my face. <laughs> yep, so here we are for the, you know, show them your gorgeous tan. And he's wearing his blue shirt this week. It's a weekly thing. Monday mornings. <laughs> Changes the shirt. Well, see, I, I don't give off any smell. <laughs> and uh, I realised uh, that in actual fact what had happened, I'd lost my sense of smell that's, from smoking dope. <laughs> that's right. And I smelled like a horse. Okay, so we're still recording that. And now I just have to set up custom area over here. Why is that not... What's going on? Uh, Perhaps it's already set up. Nope. It's not they must three crucifixion. Yes. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. Next and last in the certain range. Seems like your computer's frozen, babe. It does that. Why don't when I know what it is? There it is, close. Got it. Okay. Now we go to Micah seven one seven, which is Armageddon in Greek. Yes. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. That means down in down the ground pits where they think they're going to be safe, where you're all going to die. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. Now, we go to... Now, now how did this all come about? Because what happened yesterday? Well, uh, yesterday, a serpent. Snake. Yeah, about a metre long, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little more. Yeah, a little more. Skinny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, brown snake. Mm, whitish underbelly. Yeah, that's brown snake. One bite from it, it's dead. Brown snake. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, great. That's what I didn't say out there. Oh, my <laughs> God. I think it's 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 like that right under... That can fast, you know. Yes, Dex says. <laughs> like, if I want to get you, I'll get you. Oh, right. Totally. That's what I was telling... So where that, that is it a, now? Uh, it's in the hole hmm. at the side of the fence, which is still with the uh, cuttings from the lawnmower. Yeah. And a pot plant with a marijuana tree in it. Ah. And it is living in there. So I went and seen it this morning. Oh, you did? Yeah. Said hello. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so that as it slithered by Karen's feet, that she was now up on the goat. Yeah. <laughs> and then I tell, I tell her the story of my grandmother, this is in the 40s, I told her this directly after this about my grandmother, how she sat on, on the toilet all day while she was there, a brown snake came and they just, all day, she sat there not moving, it not moving, until granddad came home with the shotgun and he just, he, shot he the took, grandmother? No, yeah, well, <laughs> no, no, shot the snake. Oh, Got rid of it. But she, wait, so this is what I told Karen directly. So that was a brown snake. Mm. Mm. Well, that's appropriate, isn't it? Okay. Considering what's going on in the world. Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Right. Luke 11, 11. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Let him learn. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So what was Moses doing? Worshipping the loose mm. Okay, so John, now we just go straight through to Revelation. There's a collation. Oh, I'll go back to the Revelation. This is uh, 2CO113. I've never read it. I'm going to read it now. Corinthians? Corinthians, is it? It's 2 Corinthians. It has to be. 2CO. Yeah, it's 2 Corinthians. 11.3. So you've got the number 2113. Right. That's the first thing in the back. 2113. With a straight course. That's in Greek. Mm. 2113. 
fear, be moved, trouble, vexed, from two one 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 agitation with fear, you know, pack of shit. Right. Okay. But great. I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtle, subtlety. Subtlety. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Paul writing, supposedly. Paul didn't write any. No, he didn't write any of them. <laughs> He's fourteen different authors. Yes. <laughs> now, any, any good and of course, linguists. Okay, now understand the right. difference between high Greek and low Greek. All right, getting back like to the parable of Adam and Eve, who's to blame for the fall? I don't know what Yeah, well, who? I just who, gave it a chance, right? I, I know, but and who? And the great dragon was cast out. The old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. That's Revelation 1 to 9. Then you go 12, 14. And to the woman were given two wings of the great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness and her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Mm. 12, 14. You look up the verse number. Demas from 12, 16. Demetrius. It was Demetrius in, portrayed in the movie The Road, I think it was, Victor Mature, Big Hansen. Mm. And he played a part of the of Demetrius. And he took the road of Jesus. You know? mm. And he did all sorts of miracles. Lovely movie. Yeah, Victor Mature. Alright, so now. Oh, Demetrius. Moving right along to see. Um <coughs> Onto this PowerPoint that you've prepared. Oh yeah, do yeah, that, and we can have a bit of a dialogue as we go. Okay, marvelous. Now, because we've got to tell the world about Albert Einstein, who's been made out by the Zionists that he was an atheist. Well, that's com a complete fabrication, as everything is from Zionist Jewry, all lies, because their father is father of all lies. Okay. Albert Einstein has been quoted as saying he did not believe in God or Jesus. Now, uh, this website up there on the screen, you'll see it, godandscience.org. Quoting Einstein. Okay, so this is, these are Einstein's words. I initially saw Jesus as a brilliant teacher when I read the Gospels for the first time at age 32. In view of such harmony in the cosmos, which I, with my limited human mind, am able to recognise, there are yet people who say there is no God. But what really makes me angry is that they quote me for the support of such views. So, uh, Albert Einstein. From the point he was raised in a Catholic well, school. Well, we've got to get to that. He was raised in a Catholic school. Yes. Yet he was 32 before he read the Gospels. They don't teach the Gospels no, in a Catholic no, school. No, no, no. They didn't teach me the Gospels. No. Um, and of course, it's all about... Well, of course, years ago, in the Dark Ages, that's what the Dark Ages was. You've got the priests reading the Latin only. They could only understand it. And somebody else pointed out last week on um, Latin is actually Satan. Mm. Latin, Satan. Anyway, okay, so continuing with the quote from well, Albert Einstein. The last Einstein. one, by the way, 202, which is Captain. Right. And this is, of course, Charles. Yes. Right. And he laid hold of, on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Well, Charles, you're out of here. There's no binding one thousand years. No. It's all over now. They oh, will yeah. cease to exist. Okay, so continuing with Albert Einstein, this is mar marvellous. I am not an atheist, and I don't think I can call myself a pantheist. We are in the position of a little child entering a library filled with books in many languages. The child knows someone must have written those books. It does not know how. It does not understand the languages in which they are written. The child dimly suspects a mysterious order in the arrangements of the books but doesn't know what it is. That, it seems to me, is the attitude of even the most intelligent human being toward God. So Einstein had it right. 
and Yahweh thing going over and over unless you become like a small child and it's with that kind of a childish attitude that Einstein knew and understood even the man he was. That was so his they attitude blamed him with inventing the bomb? Oh, they, they did, totally. They set him up, up like, you know, he was responsible, his physics responsible for the A-bomb, which it was. And so, uh, anyway, typical Zionist. Okay, Albert Einstein received instruction in both Christianity at a Roman Catholic school and Judaism, his family of origin. When interviewed by the Saturday Evening Post in 1929, Einstein was asked what he thought of Christianity. The question was, to what extent are you influenced by Christianity? And his response, as a child I received instruction in both the Bible and the Talmud. I am a Jew, but I am enthralled by the luminous figure of the Nazarene. The question, have you read Emil Ludwig's book on Jesus? The answer, Emil Ludwig's Jesus is shallow. Jesus is too colossal for the pen of phrase mongers, however artful. No man can dispose of Christianity with a bon mot. Which is? I haven't a clue. Anybody know what a bon mot is? <laughs> a touche? Touche. Bon mot. <laughs> bon mot. B-O-N-M-O-T. Good something. Right? Bon? Yeah, bon right. mot. We'll have to find out. Somebody else can tell us. Google ah. search it out there, guys, and tell us. Okay. The next question. So you accept the historical existence of Jesus. Uh, his response. Unquestionably, no one can read the Gospels without feeling the actual presence of Jesus. His personality pulsates in every word. No myth is filled with such life. So with that, knowing that once again the Zionist media has promoted the lie that Einstein was an atheist, supporting university lies, promoting evolution and denying any possibility of creation which is now proven to be caused by intelligent design that is God. Thank you very much. What would Einstein make of Christ being back? Now, I just want to point out here, for those of you who have not read the occult power of technology, which is all about the money lords, and um, it's stated very clearly there that uh, how they will take over the world and what they've been able to accomplish so far is that they will fund, because remember, everybody who's out there on the public stage and in education centres is funded by these dudes, um, they will fund the evolutionists, the evolution university professors and teachers, however uh, lacking in intelligence they might be. They're the ones that get the most funding. So that's why when you come across the evolutionists, um, they have comfortable tenure in their universities. Bottom line is they've been bought. And when you listen to them, they are so empty of intelligence and logic that um, it's no wonder they have to be funded because they certainly wouldn't make it in the real world of intelligence. So uh, it's all part of the Zionist Talmudic plan that they've been able to bring about for Jude, Jewish world domination. Okay, it is written in the book of Revelation found in the King James 1611 New Testament that the Comforter will come in the end, will teach you all things, and the Comforter is the ghost of Jesus. The Trinity is a term applied to God in three entities. Number one is God, Yahweh, Yahweh or Jehovah. Number two is the life, the lifetime of Jesus. Now, of course, Jesus was the Father. That's why he said to his disciples, when they asked him after being with him all that time, show us the Father. Jesus, show us the Father. And irritated, <laughs> just like he is today. You've got to fill these people up down low this story away because you're going to get it. Oh, oh yeah. You know, we've had another site taken down. Uh, thanks to Lisa Marie and, and she's now a head troll in, in, in the uh, yeah, planet. It's about time that uh, I should thank Lisa because she did exactly what I told her to do. Yeah, totally. So, well so done, Lisa. Her, flick, go become a troll because you'll get the name out there with your inside information. <laughs> right? And uh, there was, if she did that, mm. her daughter would not be excluded from her. Life. Oh, there we go. So Lisa's doing exactly what Yahweh and her mother's in heaven. Wanted to do. 
um, yeah, she's getting the name out there with all the, or, or just makes it spread faster. So her daughter goes into paradise because of Lisa's actions and her mother's already in heaven. So Now, um, as I say, it's all good. Mm. Uh, let me see. The comforter will come in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. So what have we got? We've got the lifetime of Jesus who is the Father Yahweh. That's why he said to his disciples, I'm at living here. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. Meaning the same soul. Yahweh. So the Father was Yahweh who experienced life for 33.78 years, died on the cross and reincarnated on January 11th, 1974. <coughs> now, okay, so he's back. And that is the ghost of Jesus, back with a new name. Okay? Go to the Revelation 3.12. talks about the new name of God. Ryan Leonard Golightly Marshall has an English gematria that totals 312. So there there is a great big blues clue. 3.12, Revelation 3.12, the new name of God. So for all of you Christians out there who are watching this going, oh, 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 running to your Word of God, the book. He is the book. The Word of God was Jesus, the man. Remember the Word made manifest, John 1.1? 1, 1? And of course, the Word of God in his second incarnation is a man with a new name of God. And when you go over to now the Revelation 19.12, it's a name written that only he would know. And then move right along to 1913. The Word of God, capital, is the name referred to in 1912. So do a little bit of intelligent digging. It doesn't take much and you will understand the connection. So of course it's the name written that only he will know. So it's not Jesus, it's not Yahshua, it's not Yahweh, it's not the names that people already know and associate with God. If it's a name written that only he will know, then only he will know it. So he has to reveal it to the world. That's what the revelation is all about. Benjamin and only he can. Benjamin. Oh, I'm so hungry. Yeah, can you put it? Yeah, yeah, no, just, just butter. What's the butter on one of them? Yeah. On the plate? With Vegemite. Yeah. I'm going to be awesome. <laughs> oh, why am I so hungry right now? Oh, it must have been that uh, yerba milk tea I drank. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's your pregnant. Oh! <laughs> Good picture. Okay. Doesn't look a lot like me. <laughs> oh, I imagine putting out somebody six foot two, <laughs> nine pounds twelve, and winning my side. Well, no thanks. Um, okay. <sighs> Moving right along with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost does not float around advising no. anyone. Right. Conceived with the Holy Ghost. Right? The Holy Ghost is the name of the Ghost of Jesus after the crucifixion. After the crucifixion. Not the one that conceived in. Therefore, bullshit. Okay, I'll explain that when we get down to the actual slide that's talking about the Holy Ghost. I wanted to get on that, um, that, that, that uh, comedian magicians in Las Vegas. Yeah. Teller? Penn and Teller. Penn yeah. and Teller? Yeah, they're good then. I'd like to get on their show and say, okay, okay prove me wrong. Yeah. Show, me the, show me where the trick is. Right, absolutely. Perhaps I'll respond to the invitation. Oh, we'll do it right now. Pan, pan and teller? He's Good. always doing that. He's, he's always standing like that. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, hey. right. Love it. I love the uh, uh. claw. And oh, the yeah. Claw. Oh, Quite a claw. Toast. Probably rich and famous. Mind you, I'd never heard of them, but who cares? Okay. So the Holy Ghost will blow, blow around advising anyone. It's totally the soul. So the Holy Ghost is the soul of Jesus, the Father who died on the cross to save mankind by taking upon himself the sins of all mankind. This concept is confusing for most people and in particular those unfamiliar with biblical prophecy. Thank you very much. <laughs> or those who disbelieve in a God at all or that the Bible or any religious work is wholly and inspired by God as all religious works are suspect being written by men. And if they're written by men, they're totally me, satanic. Yeah. What's that, babe? Certainly not by me. <laughs> okay. However. <laughs> Everyone yes. can agree with that. 
Yes, yeah, 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 completely. Yeah. Man, the people who hate me would agree with it. Oh, absolutely. The people who love me would agree with it. Yes. <laughs> so if I said I did write it in the first place, <laughs> the trick. <laughs> All right. Yes, 32. there is a method of using the King James Lucifer dominated Bible to prove who the Holy Ghost is today. The KJV, King James Version 1611, only is the reference work. Why only that one? Because number one, it was authorised by an anointed king at a time when the Freemason and Zionists were closing in on men who relied on authority or king. Authority of king or church. Number two, the King James authorised the work of the 47 Freemason scholars under Francis Bacon, all acknowledging Lucifer as God. Number three, once it was official, a trap slammed shut. What is the trap? Edward de Vere and King James set to work on the handwritten manuscript. That's what handwritten is. It, manuscript means handwritten. De Vere was the name, huh, actually he was the man behind the name of the world's greatest playwright, William Shakespeare. What did they know for absolute certainty that caused these men to work on the proof for 18 months? That was a little shit moment for Francis Bacon, wasn't it? Oh, well, let's rush it to the king. They ran it right on hand paper, there's a nudge. Hello! <laughs> Sold it for one penny per copy. This was... The Very big penny on it. Right. Now that, but that, that was the plan. But yeah, this well is the, the plan. But when it, the from yeah, Bacon. yeah, yeah. But when um, yeah. they took it to the king and he said, well, now I'm going to read it. And it took 18 months. So the king was a rebel against his throne when dealing with the Vatican. Right. Of course. That, well, that happened in uh, 1213. Mm -hmm. No, 1213. May the 15th. John. King John. Okay, De Vere made a reference to Jesus in Romeo and Juliet. A scene from Romeo and Juliet has two men in conversation and one curses Jesus' name, but he says, Jesu Maria! <laughs> he didn't say Jesus Christ, he said Jesu Maria, a term he could only have learned from reading the Essene writings. At that time, the Catholic Church routinely burned people at the stake. Now, does this not sound like Jesus? Burning people at the stake. So, Not loving... another Jew on the Barbie sort of thing. <laughs> De Vere altered the flow of the manuscript in one verse. The verse is found in Romeo and Juliet. Wherefore art thou, Romeo? No, it should be, Wherefore art thou, Romeo? I'm over here, Juliet. Having a pee. <laughs> <laughs> On the lemon tree. <laughs> Good for lemons. <laughs> so Karen tells us. <laughs> All right, continuing. That leads us into Isaiah 63. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? That's the question. Okay, the code. To destroy the churches begins by the alphabetical numbering of all words of the 1611 King James Bible. Once the trap was discovered, the original 1611 version was altered and sold as if it were the 1611 version. It started in 1871. The revisionists all got together, led by the homosexuals Westcott and Hort to revise the KGV. And then from there, now we've got how many hundreds of Bibles out there? <laughs> hundreds and hundreds. Today, only religious Bible-bashing lunatics stand firmly on the written word as being God speaking. Well, it is far from it. By 1890, the entire Old Testament of 8,674 words and the New Testament 5,624 words were compiled in what is today the James Strong Exhaustive Concordance. It was published in 1831. With it, we can measure the Earth or the Great Pyramid and any distance results in a number that can then tell us what the measure is, what the measure means. The number, the measure 
yeah. is the number, go into the concordance, and that number will be described in language and reveal the truth. That's what the revelation is all about. The most famous man who ever lived is Jesus, and yet there's no birth date. Oh, gee, December 25th. Wrong. It's all in the stars. It's another story, and thanks to Carl Sagan, the American astronomer, he was the one that suggested the date. June 17th, 2 BC, when Jupiter and Venus lined up forming the star of Bethlehem. And at the same time, M42 flashed. The conception date no, being... Out, and it uh, wasn't sighted again for 137 years. Right. Okay, so M42 went out. Also. Oh, yes. It was a Chinese. Victoria, mm -hmm. Yes. When I was looking at M42 with a naked eye. Yes. The, the entire Orion constellation took up one third of the sky. Right. Now... It takes up maybe three finger widths. Yes. Everything's going to pass away. All things are passing All things away. Are passing away. That's what they're very, very um, cautious of. Yes, all things are passing away. New heavens and a new earth. So every time they knock down one of our uh, channels, channels, and people know that we. They're on, we're on 24 hour watch, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> so there's up there, it's down. <laughs> thanks, all thanks to Lisa. Yep, doing a great job. Okay, and now we've got Heiko pissed off. <laughs> oh, it's all marvellous. The conception September 11th, 3 BC, 280 days before a perfect human gestation. Which brings us to John Lennon. Yes. Now, moving right along and talking about John Lennon being back, with Catherine coming in, the her soulmate, man in her life after a horrendous marriage, that's going to be a whole nother upload. What the church assisted her evil husband, oh. right? To take her children, to take her three boys, and she can't see them. Yeah, no, I'm going to do a whole series on that one. That's going to be a cruise missile. Um, that reveals exactly what Christianity is all about. Yeah, so John Lennon is back, 280 days between his death. Imagine that. And Scott's rebirth, yeah. 280 days exactly. Perfect human gestation and he sure looks like John. And his reward is Catherine. Right. And to be with his Lord because John got it right. All you need is love and give peace a chance. Okay. Oh, do you know how that would horrify all those Christians out there, those holy rolling, straight jacketed, who, uh, oh, uh, when, I, when I do the um, upload with really, Catherine, do you know why she lost custody of her children? She, was, she had visitation rights every other weekend mm -hmm. up until May this year when the boys came to spend the weekend with, uh, with them and she said that Scott spent all weekend with them, teaching them things and he just loved them and was showing them things and they were learning things and... And they had a marvellous time, but he used the F word. He said fuck a few times. That's why she lost all visitation rights to him, to the children. And, uh, <laughs> of course, she, she says that it suit, when it suits him... He has a judge for when, when it suits him, he uses the word no worries. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do... A, a, I'm, I'm looking forward to the upload on this. We're actually doing it now. Oh well, well we're doing it now. But <laughs> get, no, I've got, I've got everything <laughs> aimed straight at the Christian community. <laughs> You've already done it. Oh, huh? anyway, uh, all right. Look, this, I've, look, I've got, I've got this in my mind. How it's going to be done? <laughs> it's like a piece of art. You know, it's got to come together from the mind of this. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm going to move right along with it. That's why I'm doing it this way. Okay. The video will show. Now, this video will show the measure of the earth reveals Mary, the mother of Jesus. From these two dates, the conception date, September 11, 3 BC, 
and the birth date of Jesus, June 17th, 2 BC, set as latitude. Okay, now, first of all, reiterating was a natural conception. It wasn't by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was the resurrected Jesus. So we're talking about the conception of Jesus can't be the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is only the resurrected Jesus. So, it's, a, it's all a code. The name of Mary is listed in the Greek concordance as number 3137. You can read it there for yourself. Mary. Moving right along. Using Magellan GPS software, which is accurate within three metres. Which one was it a snake? I don't know. What time we see the snake yesterday? Uh, 12 o'clock, 3.30. Yeah, I thought about coming. Okay. In Google Earth and in the top search box, enter September 11, 3 BC, typed in as 1193. So it comes back. latitude. It's 11 point. Nice route. Okay, all right. So it becomes latitude, 11.93. Okay. Then, the conception date. That's the conception date, 11.93. Then we go on to the birth date. It ends up being 7.62. Long latitude's not entered. Now, so he entered those two points. He entered one point first, found, Google Earth found it, then entered the other point and Google Earth found it again and then measured between those two waypoints, which you'll see in a minute. And the distance between the two points is 31374. 313.74 nautical miles. Again, I showed you before, 3137 is Mary in the Greek concordance and of course 74 is the English gematria for Jesus. Add up the number value of each letter in Jesus and it equals 74. There it is there on Google Earth. Mary 3137. So that's the conception and the birth dates set into Google Earth as latitude. The distance is 3137. Now you can do that with any number. So Yahweh experimented and says, okay, let's do 2424 as degrees because 2424 is the Jesus number listing in the Greek concordance. So, and of course, H, H, H is um, the gematria for Jesus, or Iesus. So we also did 88 pointers. No, 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 wait on. Uh, there's a mistake here that I have, because you've got it as 88.8, .8, but it was actually 8.88 degrees. No, 88.8. Oh, right, 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 sorry. Okay. Of course you did. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. No. So now we're going to do 8.8. Because you said I said it wrong. And that's why I thought before. Do it. No. It's the first one The distance is 4412 miles. And that number in Greek means proton. Firstly, in place, time, and importance. Before, at the beginning. In the beginning was God. <laughs> Don't you love it? Okay, so we've got 888 Jesus, 2424 is Jesus, and the distance between the two in Greek is, in the beginning, God. Oh, marvellous. Okay, so the earth has become Yahweh's footstool, thanks to those who have suffered through their lives. The worst scenarios that sneak up on you. Have we done memory yet? Yes, babe. Okay. <laughs> the what stories end up so heart-wrenching that one wonders what it was all about. And as Jesus Yahweh stated, you must take up your cross and follow him. That means take up your life. Now, wouldn't I would like to have known that. The one thing you never thought about. <laughs> follow That's his life of suffering. That's what it's all about. See, the Catholics wouldn't have taught him about what the Jews taught him about, that there's no afterlife. Right. So when he went to the Catholic school, he already knew there's no afterlife. Yes. Yeah. They never taught the gospel. No. It was only when he was 32, he said he started to read it. And that was it. He that was, was Einstein. Yeah. Einstein. Yeah. Or but he already had in his psyche, there's no afterlife. Right. From the Jewish side. Yes. Yeah. yeah. condemned Jesus. That's... Um, 
that's the Pharisee. There's no afterlife. It's all about now. That's why they're so materialistic and it's all about killing, stealing and destroying because in their world there's no afterlife or judgment. Okay, so as Jesus, Yahweh said, you must take up your cross, which means your life, and to follow him. So it's a life of suffering. Evil men in the Muslim and Christian worlds, Yahweh knows of many women. Their husbands use religion or Freemasonry to routinely take mothers away from their children. Sorry, take children away from their mothers, vice versa. But Yahweh, as Jesus also said, that he will wipe away their tears. All will see the Lord. It's coming in the stars. As of this moment, August the 13th, 2012, Australian time, observatories worldwide are on lockdown, hiding the approach of Yahweh's angels. Huge planet-sized moons. They're preventing or cancelling public tours through the observatories. Yahweh, of course, understands the pain and the suffering. He feels it and all suffering he has empathy with. Very soon, every knee will bow. Then we can right the wrongs in a new paradigm as we, God in the flesh, collectively are immortal and will build, build paradise on the earth. That's all good. Isn't it, babe? Hmm. <laughs> now, if I can figure out how to turn this off without taking so much time to do it. There we go. See you later, guys. Mm -hmm.